Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Chris Carson. I'm the president of uh, OAI, uh, and I'd like to uh, welcome you and uh, thank you all for coming out for our uh, first Friday for uh, the month of August. Um, the artists are here, um, and they would like to uh, say a couple of words, and since I uh, am not the star of the show, I'd like to go ahead and introduce uh, one of our artists, the, uh, the first one that's uh, going to come up and make a few remarks, is uh, Dustin Justice. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's been a little while since I've actually spoken in public like this, but uh, I'm very thankful and uh, honored for everyone to have uh, shown up to the show tonight and to see our works that we've done. Um, I'm inspired, obviously, by the human form and actually looking forward to helping some sort of like live figure drawing class uh, down here with Otero Arts and um, working on that kind of collaboration of, of, of being inspired by the human form and, and having some fun. So, don't really know if I have much else to say. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, what's your uh, art education background? I've got a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in drawing and painting from NMSU. Uh, the the main branch down in Las Cruces. Who was your favorite teacher? <laughs> uh, it's a toss up between Joshua and Jacqueline, or Joshua Rose and Jacqueline St. Aubin, a husband and wife team that were both department heads of drawing and painting at the time. Um, I was encouraged more by one and challenged by the other quite a bit. Um, I would just have to say specifically in Joshua's uh, critiques, he is good at making people cry. <laughs> so. what, what is your, um, what, what sort of work do you do? Um, really, just getting to, to draw or paint the human form and in that process, letting the, the piece kind of speak back and or even the model. I, I love live figure drawing and, and getting that moment and kind of capturing that, that energy is really what's most interesting in my process. So um, whether it's it can be like a few scribbles on, on the canvas or on paper to you know just 30 minute ge or 30 second gestures to 30 minute sessions of of whatever can be expressed or, or really caught in that moment is really what has always been interesting to me. Uh, after all, it was a, a figure drawing class or, or still life drawing and some figure drawing classes that I, I first took because I originally went to school for engineering down at New Mexico State. So being able to do that really kind of opened up a, a, not really a new door because I've been drawing and painting since I can remember. Um, I actually illustrated a book when I was 10 years old and it, it kind of reignited things for me and started thinking outside the box again. I'm so excited because I'm a writer and I, I studied painting and paint, painters my whole life and I love to look at paintings and listen to the painters talk about their painting and it's so hard to get them to talk about their painting. So I'm, I'm excited to hear you and I'd like to know um, what painters inspire you to uh, Well, as far as like other painters, I, I would have to say like um, Gino Hollander, uh, R.B. Katai, um, Jackson Pollock, Van Gogh, um, and like a lot of the classics as well. Um, but really just, I, I think a lot of um, modern um, figurative artists from the 50s and 60s really like influenced me, um, even like de Kooning. Um, just, just, and actually, Basquiat most recently, as far as being postmodern, um, I've, I've got a, a Basquiat crown on my, with my son's name on it, just because it was kind of like this. Art to me is a very guttural kind of like emotional thing, and that's maybe why a lot of artists aren't really comfortable, like I am, even standing here, because you put, just like being a musician or writer, you put everything out there, but then that piece has a a whole like mind or, or voice of its own, but it's still very personal as well. Yes, sir? I'm gonna stand up so people can hear my question. Uh, 
for for somebody who's not used to public speaking, you're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you said uh, my my question was stolen by the young lady down there, but you said uh, listed a couple of painters. What about Jackson Pollock inspires you? <laughs> I, I think uh, just the way that he just completely gave into a piece. Uh, maybe it was in like the drunken haze that he was in of not being sober at all and having that pressure of getting ready. Like that that just kind of like very basic human emotion. It, it takes you back to like cave painting where, you know, there was no rhyme or reason, but there was that feeling of what was right to it, I guess. Um, whether or not there was any logic to the piece at all. I'm an oil painter here in Elm McCoy. Van Gogh is an inspiration for me, has been for years. What about Van Gogh that you like? I, I really like the expressiveness and, and the fact that like he he was creating just as art to be art, um, not with the style of the times. He was suffering from mental illness. And the only reason why he was able to keep his lifestyle was most mostly because of his brother. If not for that, you know we might not have even ever seen his works at all. So I think that's that's one of the biggest things is that art in and of itself is, is art. There is no value to it. Oh, I should take that back. There's a lot of value to art, but in, in, the, in the sense of things, of how we live our daily lives, like it, whether you love it, you hate it, you're inspired by it or terrified of it, like, it is still art and it should just stand alone on its own. It should not have to be a commodity to be sold, even though that's a good way to pay the bills and would be preferable in my case. I mean, instead of breaking my back laboriously, so. Well, a painting is not a tractor, so it's, it's a lot harder, so. Very true, very true. Appreciate you coming. Oh, thank you. And. I would now like to introduce uh, Andrea Dante. Okay, so this is really awkward for me, even though um, I currently teach at Ridoso High School, I teach visual arts there, so you think I'd be really comfortable with this, but. You're actually looking at me, so I don't, we'll see how that goes. Um, my education uh, is also in New Mexico State. Uh, my emphasis was drawing and painting. I, too, uh, studied under Jacqueline St. Alban and Joshua Rose. I graduated at the same time as Dustin. So, and then we both ended up uh, being in Alto, so we just kind of see each other and thought it would be great to show together. Um, my... Uh, Let's see. My inspiration most of the time in my work, um, clearly I have horses or are near horses. I, uh, I try to pick up energy in the work that I paint. So whether it be a mood or a feeling, um, I find that horses are a really good medium to pull that through uh, with oil paints and compositionally challenging as well. Um, so, so You'll notice I'm not like cookie cutter. You, like my work will never look one painting will never look the same as another painting because I don't think one experience can look like the same experience over and over again. So things change. So when you're when I work on a painting, that painting is different than the one before. So um, as much as I want to do something the same, I can't it, because there's the energy and the memories and things that evolve through the work. Um, will reflect differently in the work. And many times I don't know what my work will look like until I finally call it quits. The, the canvas gives out on me at some point, says, you know, enough, um, and I feel like it's complete. Um, many times it's a, I have several paintings that are three or four paintings underneath the surface because that is just sort of, it just changed my mind. <laughs> It just evolves through the experience. Um, do you have any questions? Can you tell us a little bit about the inspirations and what painters inspire you? 
Uh, well, honestly, more the I, I would say Frida Kahlo, George O'Keefe, um, mostly the, the feminine painters, de Kooning, the energy, um, the rawness of it. I, I like the the the, um, the movement in the '40s and '50s where it was more abstract and more about feeling and emphasis on more art elements and, and expressing oneself. Yes. Yeah. Do you work for reference photos or, or watch some of these large ones? Do you use a projector? Uh, I've never used a projector on my work. Um, the large one over there that I work from four photographs uh, and kind of piece them together, piece them together, and then uh, many I just sort of freestyle the drawing and go from there. Some I work from reference, but I, I just sort of change it up depending on the mood. This one has a lot of motion, and emotion, and maybe anger in it. I don't know. Is that from a reference photo, or did you? Uh, initially, it's from a photograph. Right. Um, but I, I changed the background space to sort of go with the reference and the mood. I used color and a uh, texture to sort of change the background space to emphasize the mood of the painting. Very nice. I like it. Thank you. Yeah. And then I'm gonna have to before they shot the work. <laughs> I was going to ask you what's going on. It's sort of, it's that push and pull of relationships and power. When I look, when I was working on it, is what came to mind with me. So there's this dynamic of, of it's never quite equal. There's always a, a constant flow of, of, of uh, energy. What do you like most about teaching? What I like about teaching? The constant variety of you never know what's going to happen from one minute to the next. Uh, I enjoy working with students and um, their ability to just and take off when they get to, you see it when they get something and they're interested in something. Not even with it. I give them a lot of freedom. Yes, sir. And another question about your uh, your uh, technique, the way you paint. Um, I picked this off. Uh, do you use a medium or do you paint straight out of the tool? Do you use cancel? How do you? Well, it depends. So uh, for the most part, my larger paintings, I use oil. Um, sometimes I'll use cold wax with it, or linseed, gal kit. Uh, I use my hands most of the time. I try to start off with a brush, and it just not for me. So I end up scraping the surface off and working with my hands on most of my larger works. I hope you learn gloves. I use a nitrile. Initially I did, but it, I, I learned quickly. Yes. I used to be 35, and this is what happened. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I, no. yeah, the nitro gloves are the best. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.